Hey folks, Steve Cruz, FishingTheOzarks.net. We're here in our homestead of uh, Lowell, Arkansas. We'll show you some pics of that a little later, but uh, a couple people of you asked about the little boat I'm fishing out of, and since it is a boat build, and we're going to tell you a little bit about it. So the boat itself originally was a 1991 <laughs> Grumman. It was bass boat, center console, and I wanted to convert it to a stick steering boat. The other thing about a stick steering boat, you sit in the front of the boat, you run everything from one spot. you got your stick, stick steering unit right here that controls the rear gas motor. You got your throttle, trolling motor, depth finder, anchor. Everything you need to fish is all in one spot. You don't got to get up and bop around from the center console seat to your front seat. Don't have to have dual electronics. Uh, originally, I was towing this with a 91 Jeep Rubicon, or excuse me, 2011 Jeep Rubicon, and it didn't have a lot of towing capacity, so I wanted a small boat, easy in and out. It's a good boat for that. It's easy in the water. It's easy to fish by yourself. It's also a good two-person boat. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to give you a little tour of the boat. I started out with a Hummingbird Helix 7 G2, and I think it's a SIDI with GPS. It doesn't have the networking capability, which means that I cannot upgrade to iPilot later on, which I wish I would have got that. I think the option was a G2N versus a G2, and that was a couple hundred dollars difference. Got the Power Flex Minn Kota, 55 pound thrust, 48 inch shaft. It is upgradable to iPilot, but since I didn't get the network capability on the GPS, I can't upgrade to iLink. Got a little headlight on the front of the boat from when we're out doing some night fishing. That helps out quite a bit. Got an anchor mate trolling motor. I use these little Angler Power rod holders. These things are, are awesome. I've used them for about 30 years. Completely universal in terms of how it moves around. You can set it anywhere you want, but yet when you lock her down, she is good to go. Put a little switch panel on the side. It has the switches for the bow and stern light, the bilge pump, the courtesy light, which is interior lights. The AUGS 1 is the live well pump, and the AUGS 2 is the headlight in front. The two little sockets you see there, one's a 12 volt plug, which we use for our night lights when we go night fishing, and a USB plug to charge your phone. Obviously, you got your little buoys over there for marking points and breaks and underwater structure. Put these little rod holders on the side of the boat, got one on each side. They're really handy. They, uh, as you can see, we got a couple of hooks and some pliers in there, but they're really handy for transporting in the middle of the lake. If I can get my puppies to be quiet. They're uh, handy dandy, you got two on each side and uh, that works out real well you know a lot of times we go out we'll take two trolling rods a piece which is four rods we'll take an ultralight rod for crappie and bluegill fishing and we'll take a bass rod so that's four rods a piece and eight rods in the boat keeps them off the bottom and stops them from getting damaged when you're uh, stomping around trying to catch a huge fish put a fuse panel in the back that fuses all the electrical devices on the boat good spot to terminate all the wires and keep your wiring nice and neat Put a Bass Pro XPS dual battery charger in the back. Got two batteries, nothing fancy. Probably went down to Farm and Fleet and got them. Notice I did do a good job on my wiring. Got heat, sh heat shrink on everything. Got little battery trays and carriers to keep the batteries locked in location. Both batteries there. I did take the fuel tank out so you can get a better idea of what's going on in here. Yeah, I got uh, a new bilge pump and new live well pump so that's the back end of the boat i don't know if you can see it that well but there's a fuse block and terminal landing point for the trolling motor wires i think it has about a 35 amp fuse in it again good point to land all the wires and keep things clean and simple put a nice little battery charger receptacle in here also so when i get home all i got to do is plug my plug in one location keeps that nice and simple also put these little cup holders in here cool thing about the cup holders is before i had my rear pull holders on they got a hole in the bottom of them and they act like pull holders too they are uh, they do eat big lighters and anything else that falls down in that hole and you will never get it back 
Well, as with any design project, it all starts with a dream, right? I had just moved down to Arkansas. We uh, lived up in Wisconsin for a couple decades and lived on a lake and fished out of an old pontoon boat my dad built for me and uh, didn't really need a fishing boat. Came down here and saw all these reservoirs and it's like, gosh, I got to get back out and enjoy God's great outdoors, right? So uh, that's kind of what initiated the, the need for a build. Didn't really have a lot of money to go out and buy a big boat, didn't want to finance it. So started looking around at different boat models and trying to figure out what I wanted. I always loved the stick steering unit and kind of went back to the original Bass Tracker Pan Fishers, which is what I had right here. That boat sells for about 14 grand. And uh, that's without high end electronics and trolling motor. Looked at a couple other boat build models from different manufacturers, got some really good fit and finish, got some good ideas from them. Uh, kind of figured out what I could fit within my budget and where I had to compromise. But looking at all the different models was real good to uh, contribute to the overall design and uh, helped me help make a lot of good ideas. So. so the next step, of course, was to find a skeleton of a boat. And uh, I was had a 25-horse four-stroke from up north and didn't really need a boat and a motor. So I was looking for a boat and a trailer without a motor. It wasn't necessarily the easiest find. Found this uh, Grumman Rogue 15-foot BB, and uh, it was in decent shape. I mean, uh, the carpet was a little ratty, but other than that, it was... Pretty good, and all my buddies were giving me a hard time for tearing this boat down, but I really wanted to go to that helm forward stick steering. I just uh, love the layout of that boat. So I picked this one up for about a 1000 bucks, and uh, it was a, a good starting point. So now it's time to go into the design phase of things. Now I had the boat, since I was going to take the sides from being angled to vertical so I could mount the stick steering unit, I had to go out to the shop and take some measurements of uh, the con I was going to be building an aluminum profile that uh, um, you mount the throttle and the stick steering unit to, so I had to determine the contour of the boat in, in, in an effort to do that. In the nerd that I am, I uh, took all that into SolidWorks, a design package that I use at work, and entered it all in and got the contours of the boat so that I could eventually design the aluminum profile that went on the side. And then from that point, I uh, went ahead and made the contour of the hull so I could lay the boat uh, components out and started laying in the details associated with that. Uh, originally, the live well was behind the, the deck there, and I didn't really have the money to fabricate a whole new live well, so I went ahead and put the live well underneath the, the rear seat in the back. Uh, that way it didn't occupy uh, any room inside the hull of the boat. That also allowed the plumbing to be pretty simple. Uh, doing it in SolidWorks allowed me to, to draw up the, the front and rear platforms and then use those drawings to lay out and cut the wood out. Then I uh, got the aluminum profiles for the side of the boat fabricated. I got them cut out of uh, on a CNC uh, water jet cutter, I think it was, and then on a press break to give me the angle. And again, the reason why I did that is it uh, flattened out the, the contours of the side of the boat to give me a mounting spot for the stick steering unit and the throttle. So that was uh, what the design looked like, and uh, that really helped out quite a bit. Well, now it's time to get our hands dirty, so I started stripping everything out of the boat. And uh, the biggest trouble I had was getting all that glue off the bottom. Man, that took a while. Used some paint stripper to get it off, and eventually wound up with a nice clean hull to start with. Laid down some good carpet that I bought from Bass Cat Boat Manufacturers and uh, used some good carpet glue to do that. Started laying in the aluminum sides I got made and kind of just putting everything in place, make sure I liked it the way I designed it. Uh, played around with everything, made sure it all fit before I bolted anything down and then uh, I started rigging it up. Started mounting pole holders, depth finders, you know, all the goodies and stuff that makes the boat up and spent quite a bit of time trying to do a decent job on it. That's a stick steering unit there. And uh, eventually the boat came together pretty good. Sorry about the quality of the pictures. I wasn't really planning on doing a video when I built this. There's the back end with the batteries and bilge pumps and there's the finished boat. So it turned out to be a nice little project and it's been a great fishing boat. This has been... Just a, a fun process building the boat. <clears throat> she clips down the water about 
22 miles an hour and gets up on plane pretty decent. Would have liked to have a 40, but it does pretty good. We've caught a ton of fish out of this boat, just about everything you can see. Got, bringing in my first striper here. That old bad boy was uh, pretty dang good, and that was my first striper. My honey caught one that same day. Uh, that's hers right there, and uh, she was tickled pink, man. Check it out. Isn't she cute? Yeah, she uh, she was pretty happy about that fish. We've caught just boatloads of catfish. We do some noodle fishing out of the boat and catch some catfish. We got a freezer full of catfish out of this boat. That's a big old blue I pulled in a while back or, and uh, got lots of crappie out of the boat. Heck, I, uh, I even think we caught a trout. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Did we? Oh, oh yep. Oh, there it is. Yep. We even caught a trout. And, uh, you know, we just had a lot of fun on the boat. We just spent a lot of good time in the great outdoors and do a little fishing here and there. And that's what it's all about. So hope you all enjoyed the video. And it's been fun for us making the boat and making the video. So if you do uh, like what you see, please like and subscribe. We appreciate your support. Stay cool. Love life. It'll love you back.